Alrighty, so everyone, next up we have our awesome film and video session and Henry, one of our student enrollment advisors from Melbourne is going to be hosting this session. Hey Henry, I'll hand over to you. Hey Julia, how are you guys? Thanks so much. Uh, hello everyone and again welcome to our virtual open day. We are absolutely stoked to be able to connect with you at least with this form. Uh, my name is Henry. I'm one of the course advisors here at AIT. Uh, I would also like to introduce some of uh, other people who will be joining us for this film and video session. So first, our film and video educator, Dean, who will be showing us uh, very shortly how to integrate visual and sound effects into a single clip. Wave at us, Dean, if possible. Awesome. And we have AIT graduate student Paige, who we will be chatting very shortly as well. Hi, Paige. And uh, lastly, we have Thais and Julia, who will be looking after the chat during the session to make sure all the answers, uh, all the questions get answered. Come on the screen, ladies. Hi. And Julia, would you mind mentioning a bit of housekeeping, especially for those who join us just for this segment, film and video? Absolutely. Cheers, Henry. Yes. Yeah, so please come through with any of your questions for, for Dean, our teacher, or for Paige, our graduate, or, or indeed for myself and Henry, um, so that we can cover these off. So if you select um, the chat bubble that you can probably see at the bottom of your screen, that will open up the chat window. Just pop in your, your, your uh, message to us and select to everyone in the drop down box there. And that way we can all see your question and, and obviously everyone can all see the answers as well. Thanks for that. Perfect. Thank you so much, Julia. And over to you, Dean. Hello. Testing. We good? We are good. Excellent. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to a virtual open day. My name is Dean, and I'm going to be running through um, a typical shot that uh, I've worked on in the past. Uh, where we are going to be doing some spell casting effects. All right. So welcome to uh, After Effects in this instance. And uh, After Effects is a program that, you know, it's generally used for motion design, um, but you can use visual effects, um, you know, processes in it to kind of get the job that you want. So and I understand that a number of us may be Harry Potter fans and we're going to do something relatively similar uh, akin to uh, Voldemort's um, evil, yeah, Avracadabra spells. So I'm going to start uh, this composition from the beginning. And uh, I've just done some of the heavy lifting uh, previously. So what we've got here, right, is a uh, typical necromancer. And we've got a couple of tracking markers on the front of the hand. Um, and the shot is dollying forward. It's a dolly shot. So uh, this has been pre-tracked. So you can obviously see here, I've got a, uh, a null object that's going to track my hand, which means that I can now parent um, any effects onto it. So when you composite effects, generally what you do is you get VFX elements that are pre-existing and you comp them and you color correct them and you color gray them so that they all fit into the shot. And uh, we're going to go ham with a few of these and layer them on top of each other. And we're going to start with uh, one of these, which is a fiery circle. So I can throw that over the hand there and I can parent that to my pre-track. So now when I push play, right, you can see that it's now attached to the hand, although it takes up quite a bit of room. I can scale that down, reduce the opacity a little bit, right? Um, I will switch my blending mode to screen so I it blends a bit better. And then, right, I actually can add a glow to that too. Right, just a little bit of a glow. And uh, let's make it nice and green. So I can either hit, there are a lot of different effects I could use. I could use hue correct or hue saturation or toner. But I'm just going to get this and I'm going to move that around until we want the color that we want, which is... There we go. Nice gangly green and maybe desaturate that a little bit like that. All right. So that's the first effect in there done. Um, 
I'd show you the tracking process, but that actually, <laughs> we don't have a, a tremendous amount of time. And so uh, rather than literally sitting here watching the uh, tracker do its job, which could take upwards of 15 minutes, uh, I've already gone ahead and, uh, and done that for us. So another effect I'm gonna layer on top is um, another one here. All right, and what I'll do is instead of using the hue, I'm gonna hit toner and chuck that on top. And you can see that I can now change the color to whatever I want. So we're gonna move it to a green again, just like that and hit screen. All right, so you can see that we're building things up, okay? Now, one of the things that we need to be cautious as well is camera depth of field, which is something that a lot of like newbies tend to get wrong when compositing VFX. They don't take into account what the camera's depth of field is uh, and they don't blur their effects that are in the shot. And that's one of the actually the most important things to do, even if it is subtle, because you've got to remember the focus is on the face and not so much on the hand and the spells. Uh, we've got a couple more things. What do we got here? Um, sparks. Okay, we can increase that, scale that up. Rudimentary stuff, the same thing. Track it to there. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll get that same toner effect that I used. Uh, where are you? Right here. And the camera blur. And I'm going to copy and paste it. So now my sparks are the same color. Okay. All right. That's looking pretty good. So, a um, couple more things. All right. What's this? Not that. We'll put that in. All right, it's all looking pretty nice now. So, um, the actual beam itself that's going to come out of this hand, right? This is something that we are going to now create manually. So I'm going to go new solid, all right? And this is going to be a black solid. I'm going to call this um, particles, okay? And then uh, this is some pretty advanced stuff that you would learn in motion graphics. Um, and we cover it in visual effects as well, which is uh, uh, particle elements, right? And how to generate particles. And this one requires uh, a little bit of work. So I'm gonna increase my birth rate, double my longevity, and I'm going to turn this explosive animation into a direction and take off the gravity like that. Now, if I'm going too fast, I do apologize. <laughs> this is uh, something that I have to work. This is generally how I work anyway. Um, this is the sort of speed for it. Turn this axis around and increase the size. Okay, there. So maybe it might be worth pulling back a little bit. Then what I'll do is I will hook that to pre-track just to make sure that it's on there. Yes, it is. All right. Doesn't look so good at the moment, I understand, but we are only halfway done. So I'll change particles to, um, instead of line, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go uh, faded sphere and then really slam that birth rate up to we've got about at least what, like 30, right? And velocity's got to go up heaps to like three. Oh, that's too much. Two. Okay, and then color. Kind of looks all right. Turbulent displace. Uh, no, that's not it. Yes, it is. Sorry. So. And. 
increase complexity. All right, cool. And then I will go add for that. So it's coming, that's showing through or maybe screen. And then one more thing I might add here, sorry. Oh yeah, lens flares, <laughs> the old Abrams way. So I'm gonna create a new black solid, chuck a lens flare on top. Uh, that's not it, so you see a lens flare right here. And I need to ensure that my flare center is actually going to um, work in line with the hand. So in order to get this to work with the tracker, I need to get my um, effect under my, I should call this lens flare. And then go flare center. And I've got the pick whip here. And that needs to go into my pre-tracks position. So I get flare center, pull this down. And hook that up to the position of my tracker like that. And then add an extra transform so I can just shimmy it over a little bit. So I can put that there. Uh, and then I might reduce, that is a little too bright. I'll keep that as it was. And then I might just draw an ellipse over that. Okay. And toner for good measure, just to keep everything green. And the blur again, camera lens blur 20. 30, maybe 40. Okay, cool. And then the sound effects that I've got, I've managed to procure from uh, a little website called Production Crate, uh, which I'm a su subscriber of. And if you're looking to get visual effects elements to use in your work, you can actually find them there too. Some you can get for free Others, you need a subscription pass. Um, and you can put sound effects in After Effects, but it's not necessarily designed for that. You'd be better off doing all your sound work and your sound design work in programs like Premiere or um, Audition. But in this case, if you just need to do it for testing sake, you can just bring it in. Um, and then if you really need to, you can reduce the audio level as well. Can I just confirm that that audio is coming through? Yes, it is, Dean. Fantastic. Thank you, Henry. This sounds gross. All right, and one last thing now, in order to get rid of these bars that I've got at the top, right, which is uh, due to the camera shot, and we've actually got, if you've noticed that, there's a tiny part of the map box there too. Uh, we're gonna get this shot and we're gonna put it inside another composition and then scale it up just a tad. So what I'll do is I'll just call this uh, last composition, um, final composition. And then I'll grab the spellcasting comp, chuck it in, and then I can then scale that up to, I think, 105%. And there you go, right? We now have, got to let it render out. <laughs> yeah, that's because the shot ends before.
And that is how you get a spell casting effect in 15 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Dean. Oops, you can see. Happy to answer any questions about this as well, if anybody has any burning questions. Yeah, I will definitely jump in. Unfortunately, uh, can I ask Ash to just allow me to start the video, please? Perfect. Thank you so much. Dean, that was amazing. You completely took me to Doctor Strange, Star Wars, all of these, all these movies. Absolutely incredible what you can create in 15 minutes time. I'm just going to share my screen now. And let's continue with more regarding the film and video course. Can I just confirm everybody can see the screen? Yep. Perfect. Awesome. Alrighty. So I would like to kick things off with a couple of inspiring stories about our film graduates. This is something that we are very proud of here at AIT. So the first PJ who has gone on to be a director, producer, cinematographer, editor, and animator for various music videos and short films for multiple agencies since graduating with his Bachelor of Interactive Media in 2015. Audrey is a video editor and director working with brands, small businesses and agencies all around Australia to produce branded content, TV commercials and videos, including Qantas, David Jones, Red Bull, Ubisoft Australia as well. She graduated with Diploma of Interactive Media in 2010. Then we have a Q, who is a digital content creator and social media influencer with thousands of followers. His YouTube channel alone has over 3 million views. Q graduated with Bachelor of Interactive Media back in 2019. Robert has just taken on amazing opportunity with Aquarius Films, working on the SBS TV series, The Usual Suspects. Robert is working as an assistant editor with award-winning editor, Katharina Parker. Bailey is working on the Emmy award-winning production, Now Wear Boys at Matchbox Pictures. And we have also Paige who is with us today here too. Uh, she won the best film at the AIT Dot Motion event back in 2019 for her film Wonder and is now proud partner of digital content creating small business called Untitled Creations based in Melbourne. The, there is so much diversity in the skills you will be learning that will allow you to produce content for all digital platforms. The course is uh, making you more adaptable to take on different roles, such as storyboard artist, branded content creator, as well as cinematographer, editor, or even a director. We teach for job placement and have 77% of employment rate. This is absolutely fantastic number that we can achieve this for our students. Our grads are working at these Sydney and Melbourne based agencies such as Matchbox Pictures, Creative Foundry, Mind Console and Creativa beside many others. Now let's talk a little bit more about the course and its structure. The Diploma of Interactive Media is the first year of the degree program in which you cover eight subjects. The associate degree is usually two years and you cover 16 subjects in total. And lastly, the bachelor degree is doing all 24 subjects, usually over the three years period of time. Or you can get your bachelor degree faster by completing all 24 subjects over two years in the accelerated program that we offer as well. Each subject is a three hour class per week, plus one hour of study on your own, at your own pace. And you can take up to four subjects per term, which will be four classes per week. Our course prices for domestic and international students are shown here on screen. And for domestic students, we are fully approved by Fee Help, which is one of the government's help student loan programs. Our courses are delivered in face-to-face -face mode. And during a lockdown, we have become very efficient in transitioning to virtual classes with minimal disruptions to our students, which is our main goal. Now, I will welcome back Dean. And can I just ask you, Dean, take us a little bit through uh, the subjects that our students are studying when they do film and video with us. Sure thing. So when you enroll for the first time and you undertake your first couple of semesters, 
um, you are going to be undertaking a number of core units uh, in Bachelor of Interactive Media film. Now, that means that you are going to do some subjects that rub shoulders with some of the other um, streams, such as intro uh, to 3D sometimes. Um, you might get um, digital illustration. Um, you've got some other theory animation based classes and uh, sometimes you might even I think uh, look at a couple of like game design based ones as well and what that does is that kind of primes you for you know the creative industries as a whole to really cement the idea of where you are what you are doing and where you belong and as you make your way through your um the you know the course you start to kind of specialize and then you can take on um, some of the more elective units that are available as well. Uh, some of them are, um, you know, visual effects, uh, advanced screen production, documentary production, commercial film, some of the more uh, dedicated film subjects that are, you know, kind of halfway through towards the end uh, of your degree. And then you hit what's called the Forge. And the Forge is essentially your final flagship production process and all students in all streams undertake the forge with their own specialist projects that they do in teams. Uh, sometimes there are instances where the animation team and the film team will combine forces to create one uh, mega project. Um, but that is sort of contextual and it really depends on the numbers. Sometimes you might have an animation team working with the design team to come up with a more commercial based product so on and so forth. Um, but the thing is, is that, and, and a big misconception is people go, do we need to have pre-existing knowledge of something in order to, um, to get into it? And um, as long as you have a base understanding, I think you get, you, you'll fit in really well because at the end of the day, right? And the way I like to explain it to people, I, I go as fast as uh, the lowest common denominator, which is the assumption that you actually don't know anything. So when you come in, right? If you have an affinity for um, digital media, then you're going to pick it up really well, but you will learn a lot of things from scratch uh, just as a precaution. Um, yeah, Henry. So I'd like to also talk about the awards as well. Um, and a lot of, uh, I'm sure you've heard it bandied around the place as well, but uh, our students win awards. <laughs> by and large, uh, both Melbourne and Sydney campus have uh, produced a number of rather fantastic uh, film projects. Um, and one of our uh, local ones in recent years was a film called Wonder in which we have Paige Cunningham here, who uh, actually uh, was a major part of the team. And um, they had their film shown at the Melbourne Dot Motion Awards and they walked away uh, with an award as a result. And now they have gone off. Um, they've had their films and their material in festival circuits and they now uh, run the uh, Youth Film Festival in Sale from where I, what I can recall. Yeah, uh, and they also run their own business too. Perfect. Thanks, thanks, Dean, for that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's great, quite incredible to see how many students uh, who are studying at AIT are actually awarded. Uh, even for the last few years, there are so many awards. I would recommend you guys check out our YouTube AIT Creative channel. You can see lots of content there as well. Now, let's move to a little bit more. Actually, you talked about it already, Dean, about the Forge project, which goes across six months. It's a massive project to undertake for our students, but it is really one of the pinnacles in your year three. Uh, these are some of the past panelists from within industry who provide critique and praise, but also overall feedback to students about their work in that subject. So you can see it really, the panelists are taken from all different type of uh, fields and it provides huge benefit to our students over, over the time. We also are providing a scholarship uh, award given to both the domestic and international students for each intake. For domestic students, this will award you with 50% off your first and your last term fees. 
I strongly encourage you to apply for the scholarship if you have already applied to study or are thinking of applying in an upcoming intake. Uh, it's definitely a great way how to reduce the price. You need to reply to the brief and get creative to show us how your idea is the best. So definitely make sure you put the best effort to that. Uh, the team will be dropping links to the scholarship details into the chat window for you now. You can also find these details on the AIT website. Now, if you do want to join us on this journey, you can jump on our website, aitedu slash apply now. Alternatively, for international students, just uh, shoot us email at international at aitedu .edu, <laughs> edu And uh, now I would like to bring back on screen Paige, who is our graduate. How are you today, Paige? Hi. Hi, all. I'm good. How are you? Very good. Very good. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, can I please ask you to introduce yourself, tell us a little bit more about you, what did you study at AIT and when did you finish, but also what are you up to now? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm Paige Cunningham. I did the Bachelor of Interactive Media at the Melbourne campus um, and I graduated in 2018 and now I have a, I co-own a creative business and we basically cover video production, graphic design, uh, web design, 2D animation, those kind of things. Um, and that's pretty much thanks to what we learnt throughout um, AIT. So yeah, we're going on, I think we're nearly two years old, our little business, so yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, we have talked today, Paige, about how AIT prepares you for the industry by giving you the diverse skill set that yeah. allows you eventually to tackle a broad range of challenges. Can you talk a little bit about how that helped you out in the beginning after you finished the program with us? Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, um, from the beginning to the end of the course, I had developed so many more new skills that I didn't really realize I needed, I guess. And some of them I knew that I would um, need throughout going in this industry anyway. But um, some of them were from, well, the ones that I value the most were probably from the Forge um, and from the Launchpad as well. That was the last semester. And um, we were able to go through things like learning how to present yourself as a creative in the industry. And that's something that I was quite worried about. And through the... Um, those classes, especially the launch pad, I was able to gain a lot of confidence in that side of the whole um, industry, especially because we did like mock interviews, learning how to create your own CV and portfolio. And that was something that I wasn't really too sure about. I was obviously lacking confidence and everything, but um, by the time we went through the launch pad and definitely the forge, um, that was where I was actually coming to the terms with I can do this they've been able to set me up for the industry and that's how basically how I came out of university confident and wanting to continue the work and that's why I guess we made our own little business out of it. <laughs> It worked well for you, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's all such a good and important point because when people are creative, many times you don't really care about stuff like interviews and being put through that the regular process of applying for jobs and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, I think it's good for the attendees today who are joining us to understand that we are aware of it. And we are trying to definitely make it easier for you. And the launch pad is definitely uh, right there to help with this. Yeah, exactly. Now, during your degree, uh, can you talk about the value of the project-based work? Uh, you mentioned the Forge obviously was one of the most popular for your, your favorite one, and that is project-based. What other projects uh, you were working on and what did it look like? Um, well, basically, there was a lot of practical hands-on kind of learning from the start um, there was uh, it was kind of like a in year one we had um, some film projects and then year two some big, bigger film projects in year three so it's kind of goes up in um, I guess the workload in what we were 
being taught and how we were supposed to um, like manage ourselves in the film projects. And it was amazing as well because we were able to go through, or I was able to go through different roles. So for example, in the first year in a film project, I was able to uh, be a producer mainly and a cinematographer as well. And then throughout the second year, I became an editor and uh, working on a couple of short films then. And then throughout uh, the last year, we did a make like a, a documentary, which was absolutely amazing. That was one of our favorite projects, I think. But then the launch, the forge, sorry. Um, then I was able to, to become a director for the first time and a writer as well. So it was kind of like the different, um, different, I guess, opportunities that we were able to get through the project-based work. That was absolutely amazing. And I wouldn't, I wasn't able to find the hands-on kind of experience and projects in other courses that I was looking at. And that's what really draw, like drew me in basically, because that's something that you, can't pass up like it's it, it's so valuable to be able to work with people like lecturers that are from the industry as well as like small or larger teams sometimes depending on the different projects and everything but it was uh, kind of like a an opportunity that I would definitely uh, wouldn't wouldn't give up like that that hands-on stuff that's what I went to university for and coming out of it in my own business now, it was so beneficial. That, that's really good. Now, we spoke earlier uh, in a previous session as well about the connection to the industry. Uh, how, how did that play a role for you when you were studying with us? Uh, what did it look like? Could you tell us a little bit more about the experience? Yeah, so in the like straight from the first year, I was able to attend some master talks um, and that was our a fine, kind of a first, our first experience in um, being surrounded by industry people and industry projects. Because before that, I had just come out of year 12 and it was kind of like a, oh, I wanna, I wanna get into the industry one day, but I didn't expect to be able to have that kind of experience so soon which was something that I absolutely loved. Um, but then something that was really beneficial was the um, connection to the industry in the last year when I did my internship. And that was when I interned on set of Nowhere Boys. Um, and that was, that was amazing. That gave me connections as well as experience and something like it was, I didn't expect my internship to like working on set in general to be how it was like I was able to learn the ropes I was able to connect with other people that I'm still in touch with today um, so all of the industry connections I feel is definitely something that was also lacking in other uh, courses that I was looking at at, at other universities so yeah that was definitely definitely um, something that I hold dear I guess. I, I guess it would feel much uh, easier to enter the industry, right? After three years of seeing how it looks a little bit on the, yeah. you know, from the perspective of the student, yeah. you would be able to kind of observe uh, the field and understand a little bit more what needs to be done to enter it, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And it also helps that um, a lot of our lecturers were directly from the industry as well. So they had that experience to be able to pass on to us and advice and everything like that about how to handle yourself and what it's like and yeah. Great, awesome. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, when you look at the study of those three years, what do you think if you were sitting again after finishing year 12, what do you feel like would be the most important for you before choosing the course? Um, well, I was, I was really hoping to be able to go into a course that allowed me to uh, obviously excel in the areas that I wanted to and the areas that I wanted to learn. Um, and I don't think that it could have gone much 
better. Like it was AIT exceeded my experiences because I only knew, um, like, sorry, exceeded my <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of like want the things that I was thinking about in a course. I wanted um, to be able to be hands on. I wanted to be able to like make connections with my classmates and everything and do like make creative projects and creative content and the fact that I went in with those things in mind plus I also got hands-on experience one-on-one -on -one time with lecturers which was absolutely amazing like compared to other bigger universities in big lecture halls and everything like you don't get that one-on-one -on -one experience with them. So I think that was something that I was really, uh, I didn't know that I was hoping for, but once it happened, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is what I wanted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actually hear that quite often from students who are studying with us saying that they really prefer more, let's say 20, 20 people in a class rather yeah. than having lectures for six hours with 60 people. You know, yeah. so that's that's good that it in a way works for you to kind of progress faster, I guess, as well. Yeah. Awesome. Now, Paige, would it be possible for you to showcase some of the examples of the type of work you have produced across different areas? I think we also have some uh, video here with us. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Let me just go through it. Awesome. So basically what you're seeing here is our website. It's the Untitled Creations um, website with um, our, this is kind of like our little, a bit of a showreel of what we've done within our business um, and within, without, uh, throughout university as well. So you can see a shot there from Wonder, which was our Forge film and a couple of shots through the documentaries and stuff like that, that we were able to, uh, produced throughout the course and there's some um, little shots from different music videos we've done different there was a wedding that we did as well a uh, wedding uh, video that we did in our first year of our business um, but basically this is all of our well not all of it there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of stuff that goes into our video production side of the business because that's like our main main um source of of our clients and everything but yeah so those are a few little shots from our experiences and projects yeah awesome thanks very much Paige, for showcasing this stuff the work you have done as well we will have a chat within a few minutes there will be a q a at the end i'm just gonna quickly move on to the next slide thank you so much Paige. no worries thank you Oops, let me just skip this one. Awesome. Uh, all right, so please make sure to reach out to us individually if you have any questions. You were able to see Donna in a previous session and Anthony, but also Julia, she is always located in Sydney. Myself, I'm in Melbourne and Thai, so you can contact her regarding both campuses for any international uh, inquiries. And that will be concluding the session for the film and video. Now we're gonna go into Q&A. Uh, I will bring back Julia and Thais as well and tell us uh, what kind of questions do we have there? Hey guys, and hello Paige. Um, nice to see you again. Thank you for joining us again for this session. Um, there's been a few questions. Thais and I have been um, answering as we go through. Um, but I've jotted a couple down because I think um, it's definitely worth us kind of exploring them and getting Dean to answer um, a couple of them, please. So from Anne-Marie, um, Anne-Marie asked about Dean and about our teachers in general, about, um, you know, your experience from working within the film industry. And uh, yeah, if you could explain for us or Dean, um, you know, what exciting things you get up to at the moment within the film industry. Oh, so um, yes, I um, work uh, at the school, obviously teaching 
uh, my day job. Um, and during my sort of off hours or when I get the opportunity to, or even on weekends, I still engage in um, commercial video work um, or um, film work, depending on uh, what's going on. Um, so I'm still operating in the industry. So I have an idea of, you know, industry trends and making sure that I'm passing information um, back to the students, um, you know, like on a week and monthly basis. Um, some of the more um, aged <laughs> salt and pepper veterans uh, at the school have had um, a tremendous amount of, of time working in the industry and they're passing on all the knowledge that they've accrued um, onto you. So you'll either get lecturers who are still working um, that work during their off peak hours or you'll have uh, some older lecturers who amassed like uh, a much um, bigger a much longer you know industry timeline so what do i do and what have i done um, i still operate with a company called valiant film company which i am uh, the lead sort of dop and post-production supervisor of that sort of my crew and my group and we do a lot of commercial work um, and we also work in like in the narrative sense as well um, but I generally practice as a freelance camera op so I've got all my own gear um, that I bring to sets and uh, I usually work in a freelance basis as well I've worked on a heap of shorts I've, wor I've done um, a heap of ads and uh, I'll work as like second camera on features for a you know a short period of time rather than like the extensive like you know 20 days or 30 days consecutive because you know i also got to make sure that i'm teaching as well um the biggest accolade or i suppose like the biggest gig that i have had was that i actually ended up uh with a work placement at method studios which is a visual effects company in melbourne um and i was able to contribute to dc's aquaman um in the comp and roto department for a month which was like valhalla that was like the gates of heaven for me you know being able to see how things work at like top tier hollywood level uh, but i also go around for tours in that too i understand uh, recently uh clayton jacobson who's dream screen australia has set up in coburg which is the biggest led volume um so if you watch like um the Mandalorian and you know they've all got like those new you know Unreal Engine LED volume back projections and screens that they've got now well we've got one in Melbourne um set up by the producer of you know Kenny you know of all people uh he runs a company called Dream Screen and I was able to do a tour through there so uh yeah I'm in and amongst it all um I work where I can I try and uh go out on excursions where I can and occasionally we are asked if we would like to partake as the studio audience for uh, game shows. I think we've we've organized days where we've gone and uh, been part of the studio audience for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or Millionaire Hot Seat. Um, and those are always fun if you can stomach watching people win a hundred thousand bucks. <laughs> awesome. Now, another one for you, Dean. Uh... How does it work with the software? What kind of software do we have and what software they are using from scratch uh, when they enter our courses? That's a big question. Um, if you're talking about film specific softwares, uh, we all pretty much start with Adobe Premiere and Adobe Lightroom for photo editing, Premiere's for video editing. And as you go through, you pretty much special, like uh, the classes that you enroll in will focus on a specific software. So um, if you, enroll in motion graphics uh, as like your um, as, as part of your I think minor unit you will learn After Effects if you enroll in visual effects then I will take you through a pretty hefty 12 weeks of Foundry Nuke which is the industry standard compositing software and it's uh, it'll put you on your backside if you don't pay attention <laughs> it's uh, it's a pretty technical program but you'll take you get a lot out of it um, for advanced screen production and commercial film and a lot of the filmmaking based subjects, it's pretty much open ended. You can use whatever software you find comfortable so long as you do a great job. And there are instances where um, I'll even run people through like DaVinci Resolve, which is a, um, a software package that is the most powerful coloring software for uh, video work. Um, and a few other things too. So yeah, pretty much the Adobe suite for film. Um, and yeah, we're talking Premiere, After Effects, uh, Audition for Sound, 
and Lightroom for stills, and then Foundry Nuke for VFX, and Resolve for anything specific, any specific color grading practices in advanced screen production and Forge. Oh, sounds pretty fully packed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty chockers is the best way to put it, yeah. That's, that's really good. Uh, now we have a question from Sky. How many people do you accept for each class semester? So Sky, the way it is, our classes are set up uh, pretty much that around 20 students per class. This is the goal. If we obviously we get more students, so we enroll them in a separate classes. Uh, the goal here is to make sure that the students have really option or chance to talk to the educators whenever they want to, you know, throughout the class. So we don't want you to feel overwhelmed that there are another 25 or 50 people asking questions before you get to ask. So for that reason, we're trying to make sure that we have small classes. That way, as we said with Paige, you can progress much faster. Another question from Anna to Dean, is the film course VFX focused? Absolutely not, no. Um, I was actually typing up a response now, but uh, right. it's, it's very broad. I mean, I know we're talking a lot about VFX here because that's actually something that I specialize in um, and it's something that I'm very passionate about. So uh, no, it is not. Uh, the film course is uh, very broad. Uh, you'll be Swiss Army knives by the time you're done. Um, you know, you'll you'll end up with a lot of generalist skills. Uh, but if it, if you find something that you really enjoy doing, or you really you know, if you want to focus on visual effects, then you can take some electives and you can just keep focusing on that. But um, you got a lot of room to maneuver, and you got a lot of elbow room. Um, and if you ever want to talk to me about VFX on campus, then I will talk your ear off for hours. <laughs> awesome. Uh, how assessment, uh, how assessments work when, uh, students are working on them, Dean? That, that depends on the subject. Um, generally like to paint a broad stroke, you'll have about three to four assessments and they're kind of spaced evenly apart per subject. Um, and most of them are practical, particularly in film. Um, I don't think I've ever marked a written assessment before in any of my subjects, except for like analyses or, uh, or reflections that people write up, which I think are important for people to do, you know, but generally that is talking about the practical work that they've done on their assessment, but you'll do something and they, they get incrementally harder. So you don't go, oh, assignment one, you got to do something that you haven't learned. It's just that you'll learn some things for a few weeks and then you'll do an assessment that pretty much covers everything that you've learned in those, those weeks. And then when you get to your second assessment, it'll be everything that you've learned over the course of eight weeks. And then it gets you like your final assessment. And then that'll be everything that you've learned over the course of that entire unit put into practice. Uh, and each subject, as I said, it, it really depends. I mean, you'll have something like, for example, advanced screen production, you've got three assessments. That is your pre-production paperwork due in week six, and then your final film due in week 12. And then the third assessment is your professional approach. Partner, you know, but, but then you compare that to say visual effects as a subject, every week you are being assessed on your work until you get, and then you get to final composition, which is pretty much like your exam which is basically two weeks of do a uh, comp this shot, you know? So it's very, very technical, no written work. Awesome. Thanks. Oh. Thanks so much, Dean. Uh, Julia, do we have there any more questions? I think that's all, isn't it? Um, well, I was just going to, uh, there was one more I just wanted to briefly touch on. It was from Anna before she was asking if she could do a double degree with film and with 2D. Um, technically, yes, you can. You can enroll into, you know, the Bachelor of Interactive Media and do, a focus on film and you can technically do the same and focus on 2D. However, there is a bit of a twist that we wanted to explain and kind of the beauty of our interactive media degrees is that you can choose to have a flavor of animation with your film degree if you want that through the elective subjects. Um, so you have, I think, up to four different elective subjects throughout the 24 subject program of the degree. And, um, and yeah, you can mix and match. So if you want to specialize in film, but you like animation, you can add in some animation subjects and vice versa. So yeah, that's definitely worth, um, I think, mentioning because um, it's such a, a beautiful thing really about the interactive media degree. Awesome. That's it, I think. We don't have there anything else and uh, we are on time. 
Yes. Great guys. I might just add one more thing if I can, just to demystify anything regarding equipment. There, uh, because I, I essentially manage the equipment on Melbourne campus anyway. Um, we are equipped and students can um, borrow equipment for the use of their uh, assessments and their coursework as well. Uh, in Melbourne and in Sydney, we also have green screen rooms. Um, on campus so that if you want to do any work in there or if you want to use the audio booths for any audio recording, they are available for you to use uh, for your coursework or even for any extracurricular work that you want to do too. I fully encourage people to practice, um, you know, just practice your skills, right? The more you do, the better you get at it. Um, and, you know, we've got these facilities available for to use uh, in your own time too. And like culture on campus is, is um, when when we get back, uh, is also really great as well. I mean, I've had instances where I've had like entire cohorts of students um, take over the library um, after hours to have like Magic the Gathering um, duels and things like that as well. And we've got like board games available and open for everyone to play with as well too, uh, particularly, you know, with the game design students where board games are a major part of it as well in their assessments. So um, it's fun, you know what I mean? And hey, don't uh, be surprised to see me hanging around after hours playing some tabletop too. <laughs> Sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> Same. I can't wait till we get to go back on campus. <laughs> All right, thanks again, Paige. Thank you so much, Dean, for doing the live demo. That was awesome. And uh, over to you, Julia. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Awesome Thank stuff. You. Nice <laughs> to meet everybody. Brilliant. All right, so what is up next, everyone? So back to the schedule. Let's just bring this one back up on screen so we can have a little look at what is remaining for our open day today. So we have the game design design session up next um, just in a few minutes time and following on from the game design demonstration live demonstration from our teacher and the info session we'll then go into our bachelor of it info session with a live demonstration as well from one of our it teachers and uh, yeah just going into more detail about the mobile app development and the games programming focus for the it degree and then um, between 3 and 3.45, we are going to be joined by our industry panellists, so our guest speakers from across um, the wonderful industry partners that we have. So, yes, our industry liaison and internship coordinator, Tamara, will be on deck at 3 to introduce you to all of our industry guest speakers. And, um, and yeah, it's going to be a fabulous occasion to hear all of their insights and top tips about how to basically turn your idea into a successful career in the creative and the tech industry so yeah if you can't um join it don't worry we will be recording it but um just another thing to remind you all if you need to duck away um or hang up from this session and you need to rejoin you just click on the same link and you'll come straight back into this session so the same zoom link that you um have been sent is the one that you can rejoin to if you need to duck out at any point all right.